Treaty bodies, the committees that monitor the implementation of human rights treaties, work on general comments or general recommendations to issue an authoritative interpretation of the rights of its respective human rights treaty. They should serve as guidelines to states on how to understand and implement the treaty and help to provide deeper content and substance to the meaning of the articles and the extent of the obligations that states agree to when joining a treaty. There are usually two kinds of general comments. Those that address an article, and those that tackle an issue or a certain context. Human rights discourse can be very conservative, and full agreements on language are not as common. This is why the drafting of general comments can be slow and taxing, and why it is unlikely to have the opportunity to reopen the conversation before many years have passed. But also, language and obligations in general comments create a sort of snowball effect. Once adopted, it is not uncommon for UN agencies and international cooperation agencies to produce further resources and take advantage of the increased interest in the topic. Other human rights mechanisms also incorporate this language in their own documents. In the SRI, we believe this, it is essential to advance the presence, perspectives, experiences and narratives of feminist activists and human rights defenders from the Global South particularly those working on underrepresented or marginalized SRHR issues, and to disrupt global power dynamics. Collective feminist work has the potential to provide more depth and breadth to the analysis, enabling dialogue, learning, and debate. If you have plans of working on the drafting process of a general comment, please do contact us. Initially, it is possible to do advocacy for a topic or an article to be picked up by the committee to issue a general comment. But this requires a lot of energy, time and resources, and it is unlikely to happen without coordinated and sustained action. Once the issue or article is confirmed, the committee prepares a concept note or questionnaire and announces a call for submissions. Anyone and everyone can participate. Individuals, national, regional and international organizations, national human rights institutions, UN agencies, state parties, regional bodies, other treaty bodies, and special procedures have all participated in call for submissions. They are publicly announced on the website of each committee about one month before the deadline. The call for submissions also announces the holding of a day or half day of general discussion an open session where whoever sends submissions can participate orally in the discussion. Some committees meet with human rights experts in private and hire consultants to help them shape the text. And when the first draft is published, the committee issues a second call for submissions, inviting people to send more focused suggestions. During the following session, another day or half day of discussion is held. Coordinated strategic action can allow organizations to push from different angles, engage committee members in different ways, directly or indirectly, and in different spaces, and share tactics and information. And because collective or joint NGO submissions are often more likely to be taken up, it is always important to coordinate. Language in a general comment can support your advocacy on how an issue should be addressed by the government. Even in some countries, this can be used for litigation, if that is something you're interested in. In my own experience in Colombia, I argued in some legal cases with language from treaties and general comments. Progressive language from a general comment can provide momentum to national efforts. For example, the CRPD addressed Article 12 on legal capacity in its first general comment due to the great importance it had during the negotiation of the treaty and for organizations of persons with disabilities. The adoption of that general comment gave plenty of wind at the back of many national reform initiatives. That general comment set standards for issues that are essential for the full enjoyment of sexual rights, as is decision-making, and the respect for full informed consent of everyone in all aspects of our lives.